In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to import and shade OpenVDB files in Blender. But first, let me explain what they are. VDB is an open source file format specifically designed for volumetric data like fire and smoke, clouds or water. It was developed by DreamWorks Animation and is now supported by most industry standard software. OpenVDB was introduced to Blender in the version 2.83. This enables us to create simulations in other programs like Houdini or Embergen and import it into Blender without having to rely on MantaFlow. Embergen is an awesome software to create fluid simulations in real time. It is still in beta but already really powerful. You can get a free trial of it for 14 days and create your own simulations. For this video I am going to use this gasoline explosion that you can download for free with the link in the description. Now that we have it downloaded I can show you how to import it into Blender. To do so press Shift A and go to Volume. If you can't find this option you are probably using a Blender version older than 2.83. In this case you would have to go to blender.org and download a newer version. Here I go to import OpenVDB and then search for the location where you saved it. Press A to select everything and enter to import. If you take a look at the outliner you can see that the simulation is imported. However we still can't see anything in the viewport. This is because we are still on the first frame. If I scrub forward a bit, you can see the simulation starting. Here we already have the first issue. The origin is in the middle of the volume, which is not where we want it to be. In Blender it is currently not possible to change the location of the origin for VDB objects. To fix this we have to rely on a little workaround. Place the explosion so that the start of it is at the world origin. Then add in an empty and parent the VDB object to it with the shortcut Control p Now we can move, rotate and scale the empty which is much more intuitive since it has the origin in the right place. In the object data properties you'll find all the info and settings for the simulation. First off we have the grids. Those are basically different channels of the simulation that defines where the smoke or the flames are. They give us a heat and density map that we need for the volumetric shading process. I'll demonstrate that later in this video. Next we come to the frame settings. Here you can set the number of frames and the start frame if you only want to use a certain part of the sequence. You can also offset the frame on which the simulation should start. The sequence playback mode defines what happens after the sequence is over. If it is set to clip as it is per default, the smoke just disappears. When I change this to extend, it freezes the last frame of the sequence. Repeat just starts the sequence over again. And ping pong also repeats the frames but in a reversed order. A useful tool in the viewport display options is slice. 
This allows you to take a look inside of the smoke. In the render options I would recommend you to leave the space on object. If you change this to world, the density of the smoke is dependent on the scale of the object. This might be a problem since it is not possible to apply the scale of volume objects in Blender. I would also leave the step size and clipping on their default values to get the best results. To actually render this explosion we first need to apply a shader to it. When I add a new material it automatically adds a principled volume shader which is exactly what we want. To see what we are doing I switch to render preview and disable scene world. At the moment I am in cycles. I show you how it works with Eevee later in this video. At the moment we can only see the smoke and no flames. To mix them in we need to use the right temperature attribute. You can find this in the object data properties under grids. These channels can be different depending on the VDB file that you imported. If you have one called flames you should use this. In case you only have the temperature channel you can leave this attribute at the default. To make the flames visible bring the black body intensity to 1 and increase the temperature. You can also play with the density to get different results. The density only affects the smoke. The same is true for this color input. The anisotrophy value also only affects the smoke. To demonstrate this I quickly turn off the flames. The anisotrophy defines the direction in which the light is scattered. When I increase this value, more light is scattered on the side facing away from us. This gives us this sharp rim light effect. When I bring the value below zero, more light is scattered on the side facing us. This makes the smoke appear a bit flatter. If you want to color the flames, you can use the black body tint. This isn't the best way to do it however, since this gives you only very little control. A better way is to do it with the emission. To do so, turn off the flames and add in an attribute node. I use the flames channel and plug the color into the emission strength and emission color. To further control this we can use a color ramp and a math node for the strength. This way we have a lot more possibilities. That's it for the shading. When I switch the render engine to EV, you can see that this looks really bad. Fortunately there are a few things we can change in the volumetric settings to improve this. 
The first thing to adjust is the range in which the volume should be calculated. Try to get the start and end distance as narrow as possible without clipping into the volume. The tile size basically defines the resolution of the volumetrics. The lower you set this, the better the quality. The last thing to change is the samples count. The maximum value here is 256. Now the explosion looks really good. That's it for this video. If you are interested in creating your own simulations, you should check out the trial version of Embergen. I leave a link to it in the description. I'm Nick from Blender Daily, see you in the next one.